Double 18 outside for Kudroda's finish, Watford 1, Burnley 2. Shane, mm -hmm. you've waited. Um, it, 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 we've been out Burnley today. Um, I said that next year. We have literally been out Burnley. Um, it, it was a masterclass from Sean Dyche, and, and again, set pieces have cost us, and we come away empty handed. Yeah, we do. Um, we were very much talking before the game, and you know, all about Sean Dyche and some of the stuff he came out said in the week. He has a lot of respect for Watford, but he always seems to pull it out the bag, doesn't he? Always against us. You know, the game could be going against him. He will always find a way of just of just of, of getting his players to do what he wants and at the end of the day they didn't play that well today let's start off with them first they didn't play that well today but Sam Vokes comes on at a corner he was designed to come straight on fresh pair of legs in our tiring back line and what does he do first first ball comes in there and it's in Sam Vokes of all the, of, of all the people second goal look, listen, I ain't going to complain about it goal and technology is there for a reason it's there to help the game Referee awards it. It's fair enough. I can't. I can't. I can't deny that. Frankly, it was all about a pinball in there anyway, so I'll have to watch that back again. But you know, yet again, we bowled it. Yet again, there's a stat going around somewhere. We have now dropped the most number of points in a winning position. That's terrible. That's shit. Because in games, I look at games like Bournemouth last week and Burnley today. Those are just two examples. Okay, those are just two examples. The Bournemouth thing, it comes in, right? The Bournemouth ball comes in, our defence switches off. Maps, don't know what he's doing. Troy doesn't jump with that K. It's a fucking mess. So today, same kind of thing happens. Our players just switch off. But, all right, you go 2-1 down, as most clubs do, but there's no urgency with this team. It's bad enough that our defence is just championship quality. And I said it last week, our defence is championship quality. Nothing's changed. Why is Holobas still our left-back? Why is Holobas still on corner kicks? It's not beating the first man. And when it doesn't beat the first man, it's because he's played it short. And Burnley have gone, oppressed Kiko or whoever's there, and it's gone up down the other end of the pitch, and we've wasted an opportunity. It's so fucking frustrating. And oh, just, I'll be honest with you, I was, I was angry last week. I'm just disappointed now. I'm disappointed today. I'm very disappointed today because we had the chances to win. I tweeted at, at half time. Pereira's been our standout player, but we need to take our chances. And what did I end my tweet with? This Burnley team will punish us. And they did punish us. They did, because it's Burnley. And Burnley are the kind of team where they will grind out a win. They will grind out a win. They will grind out some kind of result. Here, we can't. Know? And we can't. No, we can't do that. We can't do that. And, and our game management has been poor. I'm sorry to interrupt, but Naf said it earlier. We, our game management has been poor for years, and we never rectified it. But... It's different, look, I think it's different when you're in the championship. There are different kinds of teams there, more physical, it's more of a competitive kind of league. I'm not saying the Premier League isn't, but when you've got a 1-0 lead in the Premier League, you should really be holding on for it. Palace is the biggest example of that. How can we be conceding two? Palace, they, were, they weren't even in the game for that one. Swansea, dreadful, the bottom of the table. Every time we played a side that's bottom of the league, we've ended up losing to them. It's that mentality, there's some psychological problem that we just cannot see out with. And now, you know, I've seen, I've seen a couple of fans here today. They're not sure if we're safe or not. I think we are safe. But look at how crucial those wins against Everton and West Brom were. Those 1-0 wins. And, you know, yeah, there were, there were lots of fans coming out and saying, oh, it was a rubbish game. I don't care. A one goal, as I said, two goals, six points. And those two goals by Troy and those six points have now, are now crucial. Coming on to Troy, I thought he was absolutely fucking dreadful today. And I love Troy. You know me. I love Troy. I love him. I, I, I think he's a legend. I can't, I can't stop going on about him. But what, why? It's just he spent more time moaning at the fans and, you know, decisions go his way. All right, fine. I think there was one decision that, that, that was very harsh. Then one where he was coming into the box and the, and the ref blew for a foul for Burnley, that wasn't a foul. But again, you know, getting in the ears of Ben Mee and he's just he's very frustrating now I'm not saying Andre Gray should have started he should have come on today Andre Gray or Kaka was he really the kind of guy to bring on really Andre Gray knows Burnley he gets a physical back line as well just playing to Burnley yeah, sounds yeah, didn't it if you if you start Gray and Troy you've got little and large without trying to be rude but you've got a bloke who can hold the <laughs> no it's true it's true you can hold the ball up for him and Andre will make those runs he knows that Burnley defence. He's played with James Tarkowski, Ben Mee. He was there all the last season. He knows their weaknesses. Yeah, but the thing is, is 
You look at Burnley, have they suffered from Andre Gros' departure? In fact, if anything, they've got stronger. Chris Wood is a great player. Chris Wood, Sam Vokes, Ashley Barnes, three fantastic strikers. All right, they weren't brilliant today, but they made our defence work. They were a big reason why they scored today, but why they won the game. But it seems to be the case in this team at the moment, and I'm, we'll, and I'm gonna mention this. With Troy, I'm sensing a little bit of sentimentality. We're, we're, all right, we're very sentimental, and I get that, I'm very sentimental, but there now comes a point where we have to think about the future. It's, as, as sad as that is, I don't think Troy should be here next season. My personal opinion. I backed him for a hell of a long time. I backed him when he was poor last season under Mazzari. We need to move on as a club. He needs to move on for the sake of himself. I just have a feeling he's not going to go. I think he's going to stick around here for maybe maybe until retirement. Who knows? You know. But he needs players around him that are going to do it. And the thing with Troy, and I think a lot of people have defended, and I've defended him from this, he's not had any competition. Okaka can't last 90 minutes. Jerome Sinclair probably got lost somewhere in Burnley last time we played them. And Andre Gray might as well be on, be, be on bloody tour with Little Mix. I mean, they've not, Andre Gray hasn't had the chance to come on. Like, I, honestly, right, if, I'll be perfectly honest with you, if I don't check the lineup before the game, I have no idea that Andre Gray is even in the squad. I don't see him on the bench. He seems to hide away at the back of the bench. He knows he's not favoured anymore. And we've, we've seen the rumours of him going off to Cardiff. I think it's a done deal. I think if Cardiff get promoted, he's off. And maybe that's what we need, because Akaka doesn't want to be here, and I think Troy's time's done. Get rid of those three. Bring in three dynamic strikers. Actually, let's actually try and get someone who can finish. Andre Gray, for me, we overpaid for him. But he's on the bench. He's a striker, and this was his ex-team. Why wasn't he not at least making some sort of impact? Come, bring him on on the hour. Substitutes, I thought we left late today. Carrillo, Richarlison, don't give them five minutes to come on. Come on, it's Richarlison. He's been poor since November. You need to give him adequate time to make an impact. Our best player today was Will Hughes. I don't understand why he was taken off again, but I think him, I think Pereira were our two best players today. And it's disappointing. Moving on to next week, I'm not, I'm not confident. I can say that because I'm not going. A lot of fans aren't. I'm not. I'm not confident. And frankly, even before today's game, I wasn't that confident because I think I think Huddersfield got got a result today. I'm not. Sure. I haven't checked the final score. Draw them in last check. Oh, were they? All right. Okay. But you've, they've got players like uh, Burnley players. I think. Yeah, it's a Burnley player. James, he used to play for Watford. <laughs> hey, Jack Cork. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. What, what are you saying? Huddersfield next week. Uh, Huddersfield next week. Look, Mounier is the kind of guy that we were linked with. Can score. Scored today, been poor, but you know he's going to score against us. You just know. They've got very good technical players in that team. Reggie Van Lepara, um, Aaron Moy, two, three very good players. Their fullbacks are attacking. That's the thing we're going to really struggle with. Jan Matt, I thought he was all right today. He was okay. Scraping the barrel, but he was all right. But he, going up against that, um, Hadajanai or whatever his name is, going up against him, they're all attacking. They're going to bomb forward. And at the end, and at the end of the day, I'm going to finish off with this. Huddersfield are fighting for their lives at the John Smith. It's going to be loud. It's a game they would have looked at and have been like, we need three points there. I want to be positive. If we come away with a draw, I will, I will, I will happily take, take a draw now.